there is more dissidence now than you can remember, why do you go on to write that the people feel isolated? Because I think much of the general population recognizes that the organized institutions do not reflect their concerns and interests and needs. They do not feel that they participate meaningfully in the political system. They do not feel that the media are telling them the truth or even reflect their concerns. Uh, they go outside of the organized institutions to act. We see more and more of our elected leaders and know less and less of what they're doing. Yeah. Fact, this medium does that. Very striking. In fact, the, the presidential elections have been almost removed from the point where the public even takes them seriously as involving a matter of choice. So what do you think about what goes on in the White House? It's kept too <laughs> private, I think. Yeah, they should come out. I know. To people. Yeah. Who should talk to the people? Yeah. George, George Bush. Bush. <laughs> well, it means that the political system increasingly increasingly functions without public input. Uh, it means to an increasing extent not only do people not ratify decisions presented to them, but they don't even take the trouble of ratifying them. They assume that the decisions are going on independently of what they may do in the polling booth. Ratification would, have, would be what? Well, ratification would mean a system in which there are two positions presented to me, the voter. I go into the polling booth and I push one or another button depending on which of those positions I want. That's a very limited form of democracy. Really meaningful democracy would mean that I play a role in forming those decisions and making creating those positions. And that would be real democracy. That's not we're happening. very far from that. But we're even departing from the point where there is ratification. When you have stage managed elections uh, with the public relations industry determining what words come out of people's mouth, candidates decide what to say on the basis of tests that determine what the effect will be across the population. Somehow people don't see how profoundly contemptuous that is of democracy. These people, these people are efficient, professional, compulsive consumers. That's their, they think of that as their, as the, the, their national pride. It's their civic duty, consumption. It's the new national pastime. Fuck baseball, it's consumption. The only true, lasting American value that's left, buying things, <laughs> buying things. People spending money they don't have on things they don't need. Money they don't have on things they don't need so they can max out their credit cards and spend the rest of their lives paying 18% interest on something that costs twelve fifty, <laughs> And they didn't like it when they got it home anyway. Not too bright, folks. Not too fucking bright. But if you talk to one of them about this, if you isolate one of them, you sit them down rationally, and you talk to them about the low IQs and the dumb behavior and the bad decisions, right away they start talking about education. That's the big answer to everything. Education. They say, we need more money for education. We need more, more, more books, more teachers, more classrooms, more schools. Uh, we need more testing for the kids. And you say to them, well, you know, we've tried all of that, and the kids still can't pass the test. They say, oh, don't you worry about that. We're going to lower the passing grades. And that's what they do in a lot of these schools now. They lower the passing grades so more kids can pass. More kids pass, the school looks good, everybody's happy, the IQ of the country slips another two or three points, and pretty soon all you'll need to get into college is a fucking pencil. <laughs> Got a pencil? Get the fuck in there, it's physics. <laughs> then everyone wonders why 17 other countries graduate more scientists than we do. Education! Politicians know that word, they use it on you. Politicians have traditionally hidden behind three things, the flag, the Bible, and children. No child left behind, no child left behind. Oh, really? Well, it wasn't long ago you were talking about giving kids a head start. Head start, left behind, someone's losing fucking ground here. <laughs> but there's a reason, there's a reason. There's a reason for this, there's a reason education sucks, and it's the same reason that it will never, ever, ever be fixed. It's never going to get any better. Don't look for it. Be happy with what you got. Because the owners of this country don't want that. I'm talking about the real owners now. The big, re the wealthy, that, the real owners, the big wealthy business interests that control things and make all the important decisions. Forget the politicians. They're, they're, they're an irrelevant. The politicians are put there to give you the idea that you have freedom of choice. You don't. You have no choice. 
You have owners. They own you. They own everything. They own all the important land. They own and control the corporations. They've long since bought and paid for the Senate, the Congress, the state houses, the city halls. They got the judges in their back pockets. And they own all the big media, media news, all the big media companies, so they control just about all of the news and information you get to hear. They got you by the balls. They, they spend billions of dollars every year lobbying, <laughs> lobbying to get what they want. Well, we know what they want. They want more for themselves and less for everybody else. But I'll tell you what they don't want. They don't want a population of citizens capable of critical thinking. They don't want well-informed, well-educated people capable of critical thinking. They're not interested in that. That doesn't help them. That's against their interest. That's right. You know something? They don't want people who are smart enough to sit around the kitchen table to figure out how badly they're getting fucked by a system that threw them overboard 30 fucking years ago. They don't want that. You know what they want? They want obedient workers. Obedient workers. People who are just smart enough to run the machines and do the paperwork and just dumb enough to passively accept all these increasingly shittier jobs with the lower pay, the longer hours, the reduced benefits, the end of overtime, and the vanishing pension that disappears the minute you go to collect it. And now they're coming for your social security money. They want your fucking retirement money. They want it back so they can give it to their criminal friends on Wall Street. And you know something? They'll get it. They'll get it all from you sooner or later because they own this fucking place. It's a big club, and you ain't in it. <laughs> you and I are not in the big club. And by the way, it's the same big club they use to beat you over the head with all day long when they tell you what to believe. All day long, beating you over the head in their media, telling you what to believe, what to think, and what to buy. The table is tilted, folks. The game is rigged. And nobody seems to notice. Nobody seems to care. Good, honest, hard-working people, white collar, blue collar, it doesn't matter what color shirt you have on. Good, honest, hard-working people continue, these are people of modest means, continue to elect these rich cocksuckers who don't give a fuck about them. They don't give a fuck about you. They don't give a fuck about you. They don't care about you at all, at all, at all. Man, you know? And nobody seems to notice, nobody seems to care. That's what the owners count on, the fact that Americans will probably remain willfully ignorant of the big red, white, and blue dick that's being jammed up their assholes every day. <laughs> because the owners of this country know the truth. It's called the American dream, because you have to be asleep to believe it.